Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope all is well with you. I hope and pray that you had a great week. We're going to be studying this morning in Matthew chapter 5. We're going to begin there at least. Before we begin our study, I want to go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me, please? Father in heaven, thank you, Father, for another beautiful day. Every day is a blessing. Every day is a gift. Every day we have reason to rejoice. You are in control of all things. Therefore, help us, Father, to keep our minds and eyes fixed upon you and to consider your servant, Jesus, the Holy One, the one who died on the cross, the one who did not suffer decay, the one who is at your right hand. Help us, Father, to keep our eyes focused on you and your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to begin our study in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7 is often referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew begins or records what happened here, beginning in verse number 1. He said, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them. Can you imagine going to Jesus, looking around and just seeing crowds of people waiting with anticipation by what Jesus was going to teach? Well, by the time he got done teaching in chapter 7 and verse number 28 and 29, the Bible says, when Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. No doubt the words of Jesus, the teaching of Jesus, will cause individuals to become amazed. It had that effect back in the first century. It continues to have the same effect today. As we think about what we are experiencing during these historical days with the COVID-19 coronavirus, with the world shutting down, it is very often the case that people can feel like they just don't know what to do. Have you been feeling like that? Remember my lesson from 2 Chronicles chapter 20 when Jehoshaphat and all of Judah turned to God and prayed to him in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat said, Lord, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. There are times where even God's people can have this feeling of what are we supposed to do? Where are we going? How do we respond? What's the next step? Therefore, I think it's appropriate for us today to consider the words of Jesus in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Think about his disciples in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 1. His disciples came to him. That's what we need to do. We need to go and listen to the words of Jesus. So today, that's what I want to do. Today, our thoughts are going to come from these chapters here in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. If you are taking notes, if you want to remember some of the things that we're going to be talking about, then the title you can put down for this sermon is called Choose Today. Today is the day that we need to be focused upon. I believe that Jesus and some of the things that he teaches, not some, but really everything that he teaches in these chapters are things that we need to focus upon today. It can be so easy to start focusing upon tomorrow and a week and a month and a year. That's, that's where a lot of our conversations are. When is all of this going to be over? Well, how about we just choose today? You have made a choice to choose today to worship God. May God bless you for doing that. You made a choice to get up and to keep your eyes focused on God and to worship him and to remember who he is. You see, every day we get to make a choice. Every day we have to make a decision of how we are going to respond. I believe there are some important thoughts and principles that we need to hold on to to do today, to choose to do today from Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. I will actually want to begin at the end of the teaching of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7. 
In Matthew chapter 7, I want you to notice what Jesus wants us to do today. As he, when we think about what we need to do today, think about the words of Jesus here, beginning in verse number 24. Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And, he, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Today, my friends, Jesus wants us to listen to him. He wants us to listen to his words. Did you pick up on that in verse number 24? As he's wrapping up everything he's been talking about, going back to Matthew chapter 5, he said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, Jesus wants us to listen to him. And we get to decide whether we're going to do that. Choose today to listen to the words of Jesus. But that's not all he wants us to do. If you keep on reading in verse number 24, he says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. So he wants us to hear, but he also wants us to take action upon the things that we're hearing. And when we do, we're going to be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. You know, we're going through a storm. I love this imagery, this illustration that Jesus uses here. We're going through a storm, a coronavirus storm. It has rained down upon the entire earth. It's slammed against houses. It is slammed against the foundations of what we have just come to think would always remain, or what a lot of people think. Foundations with respect to governments, and things are changing quickly with governments. The foundations of job security and our finances. Well, this storm has come through. It doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. But despite the storms that we face, Jesus wants us to know that when we listen to his words and when we act upon them, even though we will find ourselves in storms, we'll still be able to endure them. We'll still be able to remain will still not fall. That's the point he's trying to get. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. You see, today Jesus wants us to choose to listen to him, to choose to trust his words, to choose to act upon the very things that he wants us to do. It is amazing how many Bible studies are taking place all around the country and all around the world and Zoom and podcasts and personal studies, congregations are having additional studies, preachers are having numerous studies online, and we really get to decide and pick and choose what studies we want to take or, or sit in and learn from. Well, that's good. We can't just listen, but we also have to hear, or I'm sorry, we also have to act upon the things that we hear. Because Jesus would go in verse number 26 and say, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. What Jesus wants you and me to do today is not only to hear but also to act. And as you think about what he teaches in this sermon, this Sermon on the Mount, there are some things that we need to act upon listen and act. He wants us to listen. He wants us to learn. He wants us to live these words. That's what he wants us to do today. That's what we need to do today. As we think about what we need to act upon and listen to, I want you to go back to Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus shows us what we need to be doing today. We need to be praying today. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus speaks a great deal about prayer and there is an expectation that his disciples will be people of prayer. In verse number five, Jesus said, when you pray. In verse number six, he said, but you, when you pray, pray to your father. And verse number seven, he said, and when you are praying. Then in verse number nine, he said, 
pray then in this way. There's an expectation for the disciples of Jesus to be people of prayer. Do you see that? While we can feel like we don't know what to do, we do know what to do. We need to listen. We need to act. And one of the ways that we act upon the things that we learn from all of this is that we need to go to God in prayer. Jesus is going to help us to see how not to pray, the right motives when we pray, who we are praying to, and the confidence that we should have. Will you read these verses with me? And verse number five, he said, when you pray, you're not to be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Isn't that great? He already knows what you need. He knows what I need at this very moment, but he still wants us to do what? Ask him. Pray then in this way. Our father who is in heaven, how will be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we pray, we pray to the God of heaven. As we pray, we pray with great reverence and respect and awe of who God is. We pray to the one who controls all things, the one who is ruler over all things. We pray to the one who knows what we already need. We pray to the one that will provide us with the very necessities that we need, both physically and also spiritually. Choose today to go to your God and to pray. He already knows what you need, but he wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from me. Listen to the words of Jesus, but don't just be hearers. Be hearers and doers of his word. That's who we need to be. So let's choose today to be people of prayer. Let's go to God with the proper motives. Let's go to God with the proper confidence. Let's go to God with the proper faith. And God will provide for us. Choose today to pray. There's something else God wants us to do today. Jesus reminds us that today we need to store up treasures in heaven. And verse number 19 of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see what he wants us to do? Today, he doesn't want us to store up treasures on earth or any other day for that matter. Why? Because the, the things of this world are going to be destroyed. They're temporary in nature. They can be broken and they can be stolen and they can be rusted and destroyed. We've seen how quickly things can, can quickly be taken. But rather, he wants us to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven. Our mind needs to be focused upon heaven. He talks so much about heaven in Matthew chapter 5. Our minds need to be focused on heaven. Why? Well, we need to store up treasures in heaven because... There, things cannot be stolen or broken or destroyed. Where are we storing up our treasures today? Where is our heart? Where is our focus? Our focus needs to be upon God in heaven, storing up treasures in heaven today. How do we do that? Well, number one, we need to make sure that we are a Christian that we have been born again, that we have put on Christ in baptism. Have you done that? If you haven't done that, then choose today to obey Jesus Christ. Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. The apostle Peter reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, that we have an inheritance reserved for us that will not be destroyed in heaven. And 1 Peter chapter 1, let me just go over there. Let me just read that. 
for the sake of emphasis in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, Peter said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to obtain an inheritance, here it is, which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. We need to choose the day to follow God. And when we do, we have an eternal inheritance reserved for us in heaven. That's how we can go about storing up treasures in heaven. Going back to Matthew chapter 6, Jesus helps us to see that we can store up treasures in heaven by making sure that we're putting God first. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33, he said, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Priority number one in our lives needs to be our heavenly father. He is the one that needs to rule and reign in our hearts. That's how we can store up treasures in heaven. Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 6 reminds us how we can store up treasures for ourselves. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 17, Paul said, Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous generous, and, to, and ready to share, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. We can store up treasures in heaven by by being rich in good works. Now is a great opportunity for us to be rich in good works. To be generous more than ever. People need assistance. And to be ready to share. As individuals, we have a great opportunity to help and to share and to encourage others along the way. That's how we can store up treasures in heaven for ourselves. We can store up treasures in heaven by making sure that we remain with the God of heaven. That we do not lose confidence and who he is and where we are going and what we are doing. The Hebrew writer needed to remind the saints in, in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 6, he reminded them about the good work that they had done and how God had not forgotten the good works that they had done. Then in chapter 10, he reminded them how they needed to endure, how they needed to be confident and not lose the great reward that they had awaiting them. He would tell them, even though they had suffered, he said in verse 35, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. See, that's how we can store up treasures in heaven, by remaining with God, by continuing to be confident in him. Have we lost confidence in our Father in heaven? Storms have a way of, do, of doing that of causing us to begin to doubt. Don't lose confidence. Remember your reward. Keep storing up treasures in heaven. Choose today to do so. Choose today to examine your heart. Who are we serving? God? Or wealth? God? Or the things of this world? Let's choose today to serve him, to store up treasures in heaven, to listen to him, to act upon his words. You see, Jesus shows us what we need to do today. But he also shows us something very important when it comes to what we should not do. I want to close with this because this is very important. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said in verse number 25, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life. You see, he says, today, you don't worry about your life. He would say in verse number 31, do not worry. You see, there are things that we need to do today. There are also things that we don't need to do today. And we have to make a choice about what we're going to do. For me, at times, it can be very easy to focus upon the very thing I'm not supposed to do. Instead of doing the things that God wants me to do. Can you relate at all? Choose today not to worry. Jesus in Matthew chapter 25 and verse number 34 wants us to consider the power of God. He said in verse number 26, look at the birds of the air. If I can take care of them, then, then you're worth more than they are. I'll, you'll be okay. I'll be able to take care of you. And he said, look at, look at 
Look at Solomon. Solomon wasn't even clothed. Look at the grass. Observe verse number 28, how the lilies of the field grow, that they do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all of his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? If Jesus was standing right here, would he say that about me? If he was sitting with you or standing next to you watching this, what would he say? Oh, you of little faith, do not worry, he says. This is what I don't want you to do today. I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to worry saying, what am I going to eat? I don't want you to worry saying, what am I going to drink? I don't want you to worry saying, what am I going to wear? <clears throat> if I can take care of the birds and the flowers, come on. You know I'll take care of you. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows. See, that's why he, go back to six, chapter 6, he, in the earlier part, he knows what we need, but he still wants us to ask. He knows that we, he knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow. You see, he wants us to focus on today. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's why we got to choose today to listen, to act in prayer by storing up treasures in heaven and by not worrying because when we do, that causes us and hinders us from doing the very things that we need to do, to have a strong foundation, to trust in our Father in heaven and his Son, Jesus Christ. Choose today. Cast your cares to him, to lean not on your own understanding, but to trust that he will provide in every circumstance. Let's choose him today. As the people of God, let's walk by faith. As the people of God, let's know that our Father hears. And if you're not a child of God, we want to encourage you today to choose to follow Jesus put him first and to be obedient. He said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Will you do that today? We would love to help. Take care and God bless.